Smith Rowe played, showed some glimpses here and there, but could have really do 
same thing as last season, looked like a really solid, tough, hard team to beat, with some quality players in there, so yeah, decent performance by Fulham, disappointed they didn't get the result, but yeah, fair play to Man United, I think they deserved it. Okay, next up we have Ipswich nil Liverpool 2, goals from Diego Jota and Mo Salah, to give it Liverpool and Arnie Slot his first win as Liverpool boss. Now if we start with Ipswich, um, yeah, Ipswich for me, I think they played a bit better than I expected, but they were kind of what I thought in terms of I said they give me loot and vibes, massive, massive loot and vibes where they're massive underdogs in pretty much every game. Nobody really expected them to be in the Prem. Their squad is pretty much a championship level squad, which is going to fight really hard. Though. They've got a really good manager who sets them up in a good system. I'm going to fight and go for it at every game. But they're going to lack that quality really to really beat those bigger sides. And that's exactly what we saw in this game. It's which, as I said, played pretty well for a lot of the game, particularly the first half. Limited Liverpool so well. They were really brave as well. They, they pressed Liverpool quite high in a sort of 4-2-4 um, press, which is really, really bold. Had a couple of nice moments. You know, Amari Hutchison, I was really impressed with him. Liam Delap. I didn't actually realise how huge this guy was, by the way. I... He's a, he's a beast. Um, but yeah, they had some couple bright moments here and there. Press really nice. Made it difficult, hard for Liverpool. In the final third, though, really lacked that quality to break down a team like Liverpool. And that final ball, you know, a couple of times wasn't the best. And then in the second half, you know, Liverpool quality, little tactical adjustment to get the best out of their individuals. And suddenly Liverpool with their down which dominated the second half and get the win. So yeah, look, Ipswich as well, both the goals were, they can't, can't really be too annoyed with them. The first one in particular is just absolutely brilliant play by Liverpool. The second one, I mean, you know, maybe Axel doing Zabi could have pushed up. He was playing Mo Salah onside, but still, two bits of quality just undone them. I think even though they lost 2-0, they can be really happy with the performance and they definitely showed that they're going to be competitive. They're not going to get whitewashed in every single game. Um, so yeah, it's which encouraging performance from them. Liverpool, though, I mean, it was a tale of two halves, really. The first half, if I judge it off the first half, the first half was horrible. The first half was really, really bad. Liverpool struggled to break down it, which create any real clear-cut opportunity. Couldn't get past that first phase with this press from from Ipswich, but then this is where Arnie Slot, this is a really, really encouraging sign from from Liverpool uh, fans, if I was a Liverpool fan, I'd be really encouraged about this, he made a tactical adjustment to sort of free up Trent Alexander-Arnold a little bit more, and everything changed, the second half was absolutely fantastic, absolutely fantastic from Liverpool. Yeah, I mean, like, most of these stats here are from the second half in terms of those shots and stuff. They dominated that second half. They could have scored more, in fact. And all because, you know, he made a slight little adjustment to get Trent a little bit more on the ball to break that first phase. And Trent, by the way, was absolutely incredible. That pass for Mo Salah's or oh, Jota's goal was insane. Absolutely insane. And yeah, and then get Mo Salah in the best positions as well. And with both qualities of players Liverpool punish tips which so I'll be really really happy if I was a Liverpool fan in terms of okay Arnie Slot is not someone who just sticks to everything doesn't really change stuff in game he's shown already that he has the capability to make those adjustments in the game and his in-game management looks pretty decent obviously everything's not great because that first half was pretty bad but still getting that first win under his belt, Arnie Slot is really important. They got the job done. It's which tough place to go. So yeah, well done to Liverpool. Next up, we have Arsenal two Wolves nil. Guy Havertz and Guy Saka with the goals. And yeah, I mean, pretty routine. I actually did predict this correct. I said Arsenal would win two 0 They did win two 0 
Arsenal picked up where they left off really. I think that's the big talking point. Arsenal didn't really look like they um, had a break. It looks like they just continued from the end of last season really. They had a couple, you know, airy moments here and there. Like David Ryan had to make one incredible save versus uh, Jorgen Strong Larsen. And overall, Ryan had a really good game. Had to come into action a couple times. But still, besides that, Arsenal dominated proceedings. Created a lot, a lot of chances. When you consider that Wolves are a very tough team to play, this is a pretty good result. Um, yeah, but Kai Saka, his goal was absolutely superb. He looks up for it. He looks really, really sharp. Kai Havertz as well, scoring. Interesting, he played over Gabriel Jesus up top. Saka Martinelli, front free, but Kai Havertz also scoring with a nice header. So, again, picking up where he left off, ended last season really well. And yeah, just a really, really solid display for Arsenal here in Timber. Also managed to get on and get some minutes. Calafori did not, but pretty routine for Arsenal. Who, who are looking sharp. Any Anyone who thought they're just going to completely fall off or have a slow start. Seem pretty wrong. They look up for it. Wolves, though. Look, I mean, I think it says it here perfectly. Positives in defeat. They can't really be too angry or disappointed about this. I said in my prediction for Wolves, really, you're not expecting to get anything from this result. What you want is a decent performance and not to get battered and your morale blown. 2-0, perfectly fine result. Had some really good chances as well. As I said, you know, Jorgen Strand Larsen denied by a great save by Raya. Had a couple others as well. They really held their own. They really did hold, hold their own. Got undone by, you know, a bit of quality from Bakaya Saka. So, if I was a Wolves fan, I'll be, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be like, okay, we, we can take some positives from that. I'm not going to judge our season, judge our team just based on that game. So, yeah, I think solid performance by Wolves. Also, there was actually something else in this game. Yeah, some Masquero. This guy's a, this guy's a bit dodgy, man. Um, I'm sure you've all seen it. Uh, firstly, I think it was on, like, Ben White or someone. He was, like, choking him, which is crazy. And then, th that was funny, but then what he did to Gabriel was <laughs> Look, I'm not even going to say it if you ain't seen it, mate. J just go watch it. Just go watch it. I think you've all seen it. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's just, let's just move on, let's move on, I don't want to talk about that. Okay, Everton nil, Brighton 3, goals from Gary Mintema, Danny Welbeck, Simon Adingra, and Ashley Young also getting a red card. Okay, so if we start with Everton, I mean, I don't know what it is, but I feel like Everton always start the season off really, really poorly every year. I'm pretty sure last season they were awful at the start of the season as well. And again, really, really poor, but in particular, the performance was horrible. Absolutely horrible. One shot and target. And I'm pretty sure that was in the fifth, fifth or minute or something. Just so, so poor. Couldn't create anything, but also defensively, which is something which Everton sort of pride themselves under, under Sean Dyche. They're just for that tough, hard team to play. Defensively, they were cut open quite a few times, fairly easily, really open. Brighton got through really, really easily. And again, this is where I don't want to go too over top because it could be a case that, okay, Brighton are a really good team this season and Brighton do this to a lot of teams. I think they could do, to be honest. So it's not really that embarrassing for Everton. But still, to lose 3 0 at home on the opening day. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. That's like kind of what I was talking about with Wolves there, where just for the morale, like, lose this game 2-0, that's fine. But to lose 3-0 at home, yeah, suddenly there's just a bit of a dark cloud over Everton. There was also a bit of a VR controversy here with Dominic Calvert-Lewin um, being brought down for a penalty and then overturned without, I, I don't think he actually saw the monitor, though. Personally, it's not a penalty, in my opinion. It's not a penalty. I think that was a correct decision. I can understand why Everton fans would be a little bit annoyed. At first glance, it did look like a penalty, but for me, it was not a pen. It was not a pen. But yeah, not the greatest for Everton at all. As for Brighton, though, I mean, what a 
as I always talk, talk about making a statement, going to Goodison Park and winning 3-0, that is not easy for any side to do. And Brighton, it wasn't even just that, they played so, so good. They look like a real good team under Fabian Hasler right now, some of the individuals absolutely superb. The wingers in particular, the wingers in particular are devastating. Yakuba Minta and Gary Mitama on the wings together, linked up for that Mitama goal. Minta cooks his fullback, cuts it back for Mitama, back post, bang. And he was just so direct, so fast, just was so willing to run. Mitama wins a red card from Ashley Young. Mitama, um, for the Danny Welbeck goal, drives up the pitch, lays it off to Danny Welbeck. Obviously, Minta had to go off at half time because of injury. Hopefully, he's okay for Brighton's sake. But then, even then, Simon Adingra comes on and scores. Like, they have some devastating wingers. So many good wingers at Brighton. I fear for any fullback has to face them. Matt's fever as well. Again, had a couple airy moments here and there, but overall, looks like a, such a good signing. Broke up play for one of the goals. I think it was actually Danny Welbeck's. Um, yeah, by the way, great finish. But yeah, Brighton. Brighton look like such a fun team, they defensively a little bit shaky here and there, like playing out from the back and stuff, but overall what a result from Brighton, and yeah, they, they, they look good. Next up we have Newcastle 1, Southampton met nil. Joel Linton with the only goal of the game. Now this was a game overshadowed by this card here, a 28 minute red card from Fabian Scher. From a Newcastle perspective, look, job done, job done. It was in a very, very ugly style, and they rode their luck a lot. Like, look at this 22% possession, one shot on target, three shots. Yeah, it was scrappy, it was ugly. But in the end, they got the job done, and that's all that matters. On opening day, you don't want to start off with a draw or a loss, you get a win. You can build on that. And um, especially, look, if they had done this with 11 men, I'd be like, okay, I don't know about Newcastle here. But they had 10 men. So you can kind of say, okay, look, I understand why your performance was not great. Because you had 10 men. Hopefully when you have 11 men, it will be better. I mean, I will say, to be fair, before even the red card, Newcastle did look a little bit shaky. But still, they put on a spirited performance, dug in, really, really well and got the job done at Joel into by the way, absolutely superb, absolutely superb, not even just for goal, it was, his work rate is just so good and, you know, he's been injured of course for a lot of last season so I kind of forgot about how good he was, yeah, he's just superb, absolutely superb, they were kind of gifted that goal though from Alex McCarthy which, I mean, what on earth is he doing, if you're Southampton, you are <laughs> Yeah, let's move on to Southampton, because if I'm a Southampton fan, I am absolutely fuming that they've managed to lot lose this, because they played so good. I mean, look at this. 77% possession, 19 shots at St. James's Park versus Newcastle, and you still lost. Like, this was such a good opportunity for them. This was their best opportunity, really, to get some points on the board, get a win at a big club, and just suddenly everything at this club is like, whoa, yeah, maybe we are Premier League level, yeah, suddenly Southampton are like, okay, all the players are happy, the fans are like, yeah, we're behind this team, etc. I mean, I think they still are, because it's a, it was a fantastic performance by them, they really shocked me with how good they played, but then to lose it with that sort of goal by McCarthy, who Gosh, with the ball at his feet is bad. I don't know why Bazunu wasn't playing. Maybe he's injured. But, yeah, created so many chances. Could not put them away to save their lives at all. Ben Brenton Diaz had some good chances. Couldn't put them away. I should also speak about the red. Definitely a red card from Cher. I mean, Ben Brenton, lucky also not to get red, to be honest, because he's also, you know, instigating as well. So, it feels a little bit harsh, but still, Cher's putting his head towards him is a red card but yeah look Southampton Southampton 
system is really frustrating we didn't get the result but the performance was really good how much of that was because Newcastle had 10 men we'll have to find out but if I'm a Southampton fan as I said I'm very annoyed we lost this game but I would be like you know what I've seen good enough signs from that game that we are more than capable to compete and be competitive in this league and get some victories so yeah this is a really entertaining fun game lots of chaos and i thoroughly enjoyed it next up nottingham forest one bournemouth one griswood and antoine semenyo with the goals so yeah i predicted this right as well just saying i did say it'll be a 1-1 draw it was a 1-1 draw now i actually do think that i mean they were fairly evenly matched but i did think forest slightly deserved to win the game a bit more for us had some really good chances and in particular netto in goal was superb for Bournemouth made some really good saves maybe he could have done better for the Chris Wood goal but still I thought Forrest looked pretty good they looked pretty good the only problem is a kind of similar problem where um the last season Forrest under Nuno you know Nuno quite a pragmatic coach where they got the goal kind of push for the push push for the, the second one didn't get it but then after that sort of allowed Bournemouth back into the game a bit and Bournemouth eventually I mean it was a completely scrappy goal got got the goal but I guess when you invite someone like that to do pressure on you you're asking for someone like that Sangari was also really really good hopefully he can have a good season for Forrest because he's such a good player also Chris Wood scoring. I mean, this guy's back on fire. He, he, he is just a clinical. Ended last season really well. Daiwa one year also came on. Could have also scored. They, they have some really good strikers, by the way, Forrest. Really, really good strikers. But yeah, I'll be a little bit annoyed if I was a Forrest fan that they didn't win this. If I was a Bournemouth fan, though, no, I'll, I'll be very happy with this. I'll be very, very happy. Snatch that equaliser late at the end. Wasn't the greatest performance, but again, Iriola's substitutes in particular were pretty good. Uh, they were pretty, pretty good. Helped change the game a little bit. Um, of the Evan Nilsson, their new signing with Solanke gone, did not play. By the way, Evan Nilsson, what a signing that is. But yeah, he wasn't available, so Semenyo led the line. And I think the game did show you know, they weren't the best without Solanke. There was going to be some sort of fall off with one of your best players going, but it showed that you know the system is not reliant on Solanke, it's reliant on all of these players playing their part, and they looked pretty decent. Dean Hudson as well, a really, really good debut, really, really good debut. He looks class, he looks class, but yeah, draw, pretty fair result, pretty fair result. Next up, we have West Ham one, Villa two. Gotham, Lucas Picador, Amadou Anana, and Sean Duran. Damn, damn, damn. This was a this was a good game. This was a good game. I really like this game. Um now we start from West Ham. Disappointing. Disappointing to lose that. No, really, really disappointing to lose that one. Because the goal, in particular the first one, easily preventable. That was one of the worst defending I've seen for a corner. Onana was just allowed to run in and get a free header nobody marking him at all and it was horrible absolutely horrible and West Ham in particular last season were good from set pieces so yeah that was really really bad but then West Ham also they had some chances particularly in the second half I mean first half I think Villa were much much better and Villa probably should have had two goals in that first half but second half West Ham had some really good chances some really really good chances Danny Ings off a bench had a good one, but Thomas Sojek right at the end as well. Not sure how he didn't score. I think a defender actually kind of cleared it or blocked it. Can't quite remember who it was. But yeah, West Ham, disappointing result. They can't be too annoyed because look, Villa are a good side. They finished in the top four last season and they gave them a really, really good game. Obviously, they would like to get something from it, but it wasn't to be. I was actually quite surprised that barely any of his signings played. Only Gilman and Guido Rodriguez played. Full clerk to Debo, Wamba 
it's like all of these guys on the bench did come on. But that's also something encouraging for West Ham fans where, look, you were very, very competitive against Villa, probably could have, should have got a draw. But that wasn't your best team. You, you still have your new signings to come in. You still have players to, you know, gel in. So I wouldn't be too concerned if I'm a West Ham fan about that performance and result. Just a little bit frustrated. If I'm a Villa fan, though, absolutely buzzing, absolutely buzzing. What a result, man, is to go to the London Stadium and win. That's really hard. That's a really, really hard place to go and win. And the way they did it was fantastic. Also, Onana scoring on his debut is great for him. As I said in the first half, in particular, Villa looked really good. Really, really good in the first half. Leon Bailey um, should have scored. John McGinn had a chance. Second half, they did allow. West Ham back in the game, but then what I really like from this game is the depth. Villa showcase their depth here because he brings on Mars and he brings on Rams, he brings on Duran and all three link up for the um, for the goal for the winner, and that showed. You know, I mentioned this before. I said Villa have added some really nice depth to their squad, and I mean it's kind of proven it right in this game that their depth is really good. They have game changers off the bench. And of course, John Duran scoring, oh my gosh. After doing an Irons on a, like an Instagram live, because he was going to join West Ham and then scoring at the state. I mean, you, you, you can't write that, you can't write that, man. But yeah, look, good win for Villa. Their, their depth looked good. There was also like a tactical tweak from, from Emery went to like a sort of back three system with McGinn and Rogers as sort of number 10s. Um, yeah. Really, really nice from Villa and great way to start the season. Next up, we have Brentford 2, Crystal Palace 1, goals from Brian and Bermo, Johan Wieser and Ethan Pinnock. Oh, cool. So, from a Brentford perspective, this is a fantastic win. Absolutely superb. And also, the performance in particular was really, really good from Brentford. This was actually one of the best performances I've seen in a while from Brentford. Last season was not the best from Brentford, and I, I did suspect they might struggle this year. They still good, of course, but from off the basis of this game, they look like you know they've massively improved. The goal, this in particular, Brian and Bremer's goal was absolutely incredible. The team play to play out from the back the way they did, linking up nicely, one two touch football, and then a brilliant finish by Bremo, just absolute class. And we haven't seen that Brentford in a while. We really haven't. Um, that's why I said, you know, this is one of their best performances because, look, maybe it is because Tony, of course, is left out of the squad for this game, which is a big talking point. People are saying, you know, without Tony and the team, they play better. I, I'm not sure they play better, but they definitely play a different style, and that style definitely works against some teams because they have the capabilities to do so. When Tony's up top, Brentford do sort of go long ball-ish to Tony, which is fair because he's so good in the air. With Wiesa up top, they're sort of forced to play out, and we saw in this game that they're more than capable of doing so and doing this combination play and breaking down teams like this. So, yeah, um, really, really good. You and Wiesa, good as well. This front three just so fluid, so nice. Worked really, really well. Fabio Carvalho also came on for his debut. Great signing, by the way. Great, great signing. But yeah, Brentford winning against Palace as well. We many have tipped to do big things this season. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. As for Palace, yeah, disappointing. Disappointing to lose to Brentford away. But, I mean, it's not the worst result in the world. Uh, the, perform the performance was okay. It was okay. Obviously, seen Palace play Villa, but it was actually okay. Create some decent chances. Interestingly, Mark Gay was in the team and also captain. Of course, he's under severe transfer speculation. As a vote, I thought was absolutely incredible. As a, is, oh, I absolutely love watching this guy. He's one of my 
was standing off side for ages. I think I was like a 2v1. I was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? But look, it's a disappointing result for Palace. Their performance was an amazing, but it, it, it wasn't that bad. Maybe they could have got a draw, but look, they're, they're not allowed to do much sleep over that one. <sighs> okay, okay then. Chelsea nil, Man City 2. Erling Haaland and Amadeo with, with the goals. Right, let me just get the Man City stuff out of the way quick before I go on to Chelsea. For Man City, a fantastic result. A fantastic result, especially when you apply the context. Of the going to stand a bridge beating Chelsea is a good result in itself. But then when you apply the context that they were missing a lot, a lot of their key players. You know, no Stones, no Foden, no Walker, no Rodri. And they still win fairly comfortably as well. That's incredible. That's incredible. Um, yeah, really, really good. I mean, some of the performance was as well for the players who came in instead of those guys. Well, incredible. Obviously, Mateo Kovacic got the goal, but even besides that, did really, really well. And we know how Man City struggled without Rodri, but it seems like maybe they have found found some sort of way of dealing with it with Kovacic in there now. Rico Lewis as well looked really, really good. His com combination play with Savio down the right was fantastic. Speaking of Savio, really, really good performance by him. He started on the left wing and didn't really do too much. Switched to the right and suddenly was just cooking, absolutely cooking. I, I said, you know, I expect some big things from him. I think he's going to be the signing of the season. So far, it looks good. I mean, he did come off at half time, so we'll see how bad the injury is. But yeah, him and Doki on the wings, oh my word, that is trouble. Absolute trouble. And yeah, Erling Haaland, of course, picks up where he lets off. No signs of slowing down for him. Edison though was a little bit dodgy by the way in this game. Don't know what was up with him. Um, it could have cost Man City the points, but yeah, incredible result from Man City. Incredible result and thoroughly deserved as well. Okay, then let's talk about Chelsea. So, look, I've, I've seen some mixed reviews about this from Chelsea fans. Personally, I think some people are massively overreacting. Massively overreacting, like. I expect us to lose to Man City. I was just hoping we'll keep the scoreline down and have some, you know, decent performances, something to take away from this game. And I think we do. We definitely have some pros. We do have some negatives. But there is something we can learn from this game. I'm not going to sit and rant about losing 2-0 to the champions, Man City. Unfortunately, this is the stage for Chelsea at where losing at home to Manchester City is kind of acceptable that's not what i want to be of course but that is the reality of the situation now in terms of a lineup i was actually really happy with the lineup i wouldn't have really changed too much if it was with the players available what i would have gone for so yeah i'm not going to complain about that but speaking of the lineup i mean sterling was left out of the squad and yeah i mean that statement was just stupid i don't know why look i understand completely why he would be annoyed that he's left out of the squad completely understand that but keep that internal keep that private man don't air it out public and if you're gonna do it at least do it after the game not like an hour before the game starts because it just creates so much unnecessary cloud over over us but yeah look um overall i thought we weren't too bad too bad um we did okay similar issues to last season naturally because we haven't you know had long with this new manager where we were very wasteful in front of the goal i mean nicholas jackson still hasn't learned how to shoot or he hasn't learned the offside rule sky man <laughs> um yeah we had some decent chances our sort of the final third really struggled though and then for the goals as well just poor individual sort of mistakes errors poor defending costs us that was really the story of last season and the story of this game too. I mean, Cucurella, mate. Gosh, did all that chat and I knew it was happening. I knew it was happening as soon as I hear him making that song. I was like, I know exactly what's happening. Marlon's going to absolutely destroy him and he did. Um, yeah, Enzo Fernandez as well. I mean, first him as captain. Oh my gosh. I <laughs> feel embarrassed to support my club with him as captain. But anyway, I mean, overall, his performance was not good. I, I've seen some people being a bit too hateful on him. I, I don't think it was that bad. Like, it, it was an awful goal wheel. I mean, for 
the second goal, like Enzo and Caicedo got you know triple pass easily by Kovacic, but then Colwell, I feel like people aren't talking about him enough in that situation. He was just standing there. I'm pretty sure it was Colwell. Might have been Fafana, but I think it was Colwell. So Kovacic gets past Caicedo and Enzo and keeps going and going, and Colwell is just standing there, standing there, standing there. I was like, are you going to engage? Are you going to try and block for shot? Are you just going to stand there and let him do that? And then Sanchez as well. It all comes from his stupid mistake of playing it out roughly. I mean, I hate this kind of landing goal. To be fair, he did make a good save on Baku, but still. He, he, he's just a bozo, man. I mean, some positives, though. Romeo Lava. Romeo Lava, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I really hope he stays fit because... Honestly, he could be our best midfielder. He might be the best midfielder we have. He looks so good. Neto also looks really promising. Gives us something new, really direct, really, really good. Um, and I'm excited to see more of him. But look, overall, we created some decent chances. We were not awful. Obviously, not the best losing. I'm never happy with that. But look, we'll, we take some positives from this and we move on. Okay, the final. Leicester won, Spurs won, Jamie Vardy and Pedro Porro with the goals. Now, I mean, the big story here, I mean, Jamie Vardy, I don't know how this guy keeps doing it. How does he do it? He's, what, like 37 now? And and he, he scores in the opening day versus Spurs, leading the line. I don't, I, I don't think he even had a preseason as well. He just comes in straight away, scores, like, absolutely insane. At his age to be doing this is mental. Absolutely mental, a Premier League legend, he is a Premier League legend, that's for sure. And he could have had a brace, he could have had a brace, probably should have, probably should have put it past Vicario, although it was a decent save. But yeah, I mean, Leicester, most of the promoted teams, I feel like I've said this about all of them, kind of surprised me, like they did hold their own, they got a result first first as well, which is really good. Second half in particular, I mean, the first half, they were pretty bad. And it was looking rough for them. But then the second half, it completely swinged. And Leicester looked really, really good. I mean, Abdul Fadawu looks really, really good as well. Great cross uh, for the Vardy goal as well. But yeah, Leicester shows a really good signs. Could have won it as well with that Vardy chance. So, getting a point on the board, getting points on the board is crucial. They're actually the only promoter side to get points on the board. Against Spurs as well, difficult team. In really, really encouraging, really, really encouraging from Leicester. So yeah, uh, I'll be very happy if I was a Leicester fan. Spurs though, yeah, really, really annoying, really annoying for them. I mean, the first half was fantastic. The first half was fantastic. They dominated it. Should have scored more than one goal, but just really, really ways for in front of goal. Really, really ways for in front of goal. Pedro Borra goal that Edda was really nice though, but they should have been at least two up in that first half. And then suddenly, second half, things changed. They completely collapsed. Leicester get back into the game and Tottenham, you know, struggled to really create those chances again. And this is where something I was talking a little bit about in my predictions, I was saying about their depth. Um, and I think that's an issue. When that game did swing, you know, Leicester scored and they're like, okay, we need to change things now. You know, the players who got, came on didn't really do too much in terms of changing that. Um, so, yeah, you know, like Timo Werner came on, didn't do anything. And so, yeah, I, I am a little bit concerned about that. Um, interestingly, Christian Romero also played this game and I, 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 I didn't expect him to start. But, yeah, Spurs, I mean, it's kind of like Liverpool where just flipped first half fantastic second half not great really disappointing dropping points do Leicester but look there are of course some positives to take from that and yeah maybe they can build upon this and get rid of that second half performance right then that's all the games let's do our little awards for this week then before we wrap up so player of the week now um Gary Mittema deserves a mention Brian and Buemo Joel Linden, Trent Alexander-Arnold, but it has got to be this guy just for the story, man, Jamie Vardy, scoring at, what, 37 years old, first Spurs on his return to the Prem, I mean, just what a legend he is, I've got to give it to him. Flop of the week, flop of the week, um, it, it's got to be one man, it's got to be one man from Chelsea, Mark Gugarella, gave, gave it a big one, and got absolutely by Haaland, Haaland scores against him, yeah, yeah, good gorilla easily, moment of the week, moment of the week, I mean, we had some good moments, I mean, Trent's pass first, 
Santos Ipswich for that Yota goal was incredible. That Embuemo goal was superb to watch. I mean, if I want to be, <laughs> if I want like a non sort of football one, I mean, that Mosquero one was pretty mad, but I'm not picking that. You know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to go for, where is it? John Duran. John Duran scoring the winner at the Olympic Stadium versus West Ham after, after almost joining them. Yeah, that, that's the moment of a week for sure, but I mean, that's just poetic. Worst refereeing decision. I actually think most refereeing decisions were pretty good this week, except the absolute clangor in that Crystal Palace Brentford game from that Eze goal. Absolute clangor. And the debut of the week. The best debut. Masrawi was pretty good. Onana obviously scored. But you know what? I think just for the, you know, story, I he probably he didn't have the best performance in terms of a debut. Best moment for sure, Joshua Zerksy scoring a late winner, coming off the bench on your debut to score the late winner at Old Trafford on the opening day of the season. I'm not sure you can get a better debut than that. So there we go. That is the Game Week 1 review done. Let me know your thoughts on all of the games in the comments.